I'd like to welcome you to the UVAT session. Uh, I'm Narsingh Rao from Los Angeles. Uh, the co-chair of this session uh, is Dr. Janet Davis from Miami. The first speaker of this session is from Stephen A. He's going to talk to us on emerging infectious diseases. Steve? Well, thank you very much to the AAO Program Planning Committee and also the Retina Subspecialty Date Committee, as well as Dr. Rao and Dr. Davis for moderating the session. I'll be speaking on emerging infectious diseases. First, I'd like to acknowledge my co-author, Dr. Jessica Shanta, as well as our partners at Emory University and our partners at the WHO and abroad. These are my financial disclosures. So emerging infectious disease, as defined, are these conditions whose incidence have increased in the last two decades or which threaten to increase in incidence in the near future. They're a growing threat to life, health, and prosperity, as evidenced by Ebola virus disease, Zika virus, and severe acute respiratory syndrome in Asia. These outbreaks led to significant economic, economic loss of over $2 billion with Ebola, 3.5 with Zika, and $54 billion in Asia and in China in 2003. The WHO has defined high priority diseases. These are emerging pathogens likely to cause outbreaks in the near future. In some ways, we think of this perhaps as a retina uveitis to-do list, as many of these conditions actually have ophthalmic manifestations, including Ebola, Rift Valley fever, which causes retinitis, and Zika virus, which I'll speak to. And there are a number of viruses that are actually targeted by the Coalition of Epidemic Preparedness Innovations for vaccine therapies because of their public health threat. And these are several of them to note. Lassa fever virus is an acute viral hemorrhagic fever that leads to half a million cases per year, which is endemic to West Africa. During survivorship, about a third of these individuals will develop deafness, and the vision health consequences are under study. Nipah virus is a highly lethal pathogen that leads to CNS, encephalitis, and respiratory disease, with recent outbreaks in South and Southeast Asia, and there has been one rare, rare report of a central retinal artery occlusion in this context. Zika virus has a number of ophthalmic manifestations. Dr. Camila Ventura and individuals from the Altina Ventura Foundation, as well as others, have characterized ocular findings in the congenital Zika virus syndrome. Infants who are born with Zika virus infected mothers are susceptible to developing microcephaly, as well as macular atrophy, optic nerve hypoplasia, and anterior segment abnormalities. In the acute setting, individuals may also develop acute anterior uveitis with Zika virus persistence in the ocular fluid. Posterior segment manifestations have also been rarely characterized, as pictured here. Dengue, chikungunya, and West Nile virus are arboviruses, which also can lead to ophthalmic manifestations. Dengue has been well characterized by our colleagues in Singapore, which leads to a maculopathy thought to be inflammatory in nature with retinal hemorrhage, as well as optic disc edema. Chikungunya may lead to a debilitating arthritis and uveitis, and has been characterized in Southeast Asia, also causing neuroretinitis with exudation. <clears throat> and chikun chikungunya has also been identified in the aqueous humor. West Nile virus was certainly on the media radar in the early 2000s with outbreaks at that point. Uh, but also may lead to a multifocal retinitis that's been identified in all the states within the continental U.S. Yellow fever is endemic <clears throat> to sub-Saharan Africa and also South America, with symptoms including fever, chills, headaches, and nausea and vomiting. A modest proportion of these individuals <clears throat> may also develop high fevers, multi-organ failure, and jaundice with a fairly high mortality. A recent case series from Brazil showed that 20% of patients with yellow fever developed a retinopathy, particularly in severe disease, with nerve fiber layer infarcts, as pictured here, as well as retinal hemorrhages and gray lesions within the outer retina and choroid. So focusing on Ebola, Ebola is truly a reflection of fragile health systems where this occurs, particularly in the, con the countries of DR Congo, Sierra Leone, and Liberia, the highest transmission countries in recent years. These countries lag far behind the world with indices of human health, including infant mortality, under five childhood mortality, as well as life expectancy. And this is of particular significance given that there have been three Ebola outbreaks within the DR Congo between 2017 and 2019, including the second largest Ebola outbreak in history, which is currently ongoing, leading to over 3,000 cases and over 2,000 deaths, many of whom are infants and children. This outbreak is particularly problematic given the security and stability with armed militia and its location within a conflict zone within Eastern DRC sharing porous borders with Uganda, Rwanda, and South Sudan, and certainly should re remain on our public health radar. So what do we know about Ebola? Ebola, we know, can, can cause an aggressive vision-threatening eye inflammation. These are images from a United States healthcare worker and Ebola survivor who developed a hypertensive anterior uveitis, progressing to an intermediate uveitis and subsequently a full-blown pan-uveitis 
with iris heterochromia. This was back in 2014. In this context, we recognized that Ebola virus RNA could persist in the aqueous humor when it actually had cleared from the blood. And this was fully three months after his acute Ebola virus infection. This was actually found to be viral culture positive by the CDC viral special pathogens branch. Since then, our West Africa experience has taught us more about this condition. A study from the NIH shows that about a quarter of patients, survivors will develop uveitis in their study. And actually, this increases over the course of a year to about a third of patients developing uveitis. Many of these patients will develop vision impairment from conditions such as neovascular glaucoma, uveitic cataract, and other sequelae that occur largely due to lack of access and also late recognition of this disease. The measles outbreak has also been on the media radar with over 1,200 cases in 31 states. This is the greatest number of cases that's actually been seen since 1992, the majority of which have been linked to an outbreak in Rockland County in New York. Risk factors include lack of uh, failure of vaccination, as well as travelers coming from measles endemic regions, including Central Africa. It's important to think about the ophthalmic complications, which were defined by Al Summer with seminal work from Hopkins within Africa in the 1980s. Patients with measles can develop xeropthalmia corneal ulceration with a strong association with vitamin A deficiency. This late complication reported out of India showed a patient who developed bilateral necrotizing retinitis in concert with a subacute sclerosing panencephalitis, SSPE, which is a CNS complication of measles viral persistence and active viral replication. This is an unfortunate young patient we saw in West Africa. He's two years old, had a history of measles keratitis during infancy, developed corneal scarring, eventually developed Ebola virus, and developed uveitis in his left eye with complications as shown here. Now, disease X represents the knowledge that a serious international epidemic could be caused by a pathogen not currently known to cause human disease. And for this reason, the World Health Organization recommends cross-cutting preparedness measures that are relevant to detect these types of diseases from any country bridging the gap between human health, ecology, as well as animal health. And certainly preparedness measures are necessary. So what is our role as a retina specialist in IMDs? First, we want to continue to characterize uveitis and retinal complications that represent vision health threats of emerging infectious disease. We also want to continue to protect the patient and provider team with a heightened awareness for infectious, infectious pathogens within ocular reservoirs, not to induce stigma, but rather to be able to understand and recognize these disease conditions. And also, we want to address our public and global health mandate to address these vision health disparities for patients who reside in fragile health systems where these emerging infectious diseases may, as, may arise. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Ye.